Hello all, I am the Holland Phantom, and for today's video we're going to be having a live battle from the 2003 format. On one side, we've got the Meganium Executor deck going up against the Dark Gengar Noctowl deck on the other side, so we'll see which of these two decks can take the victory today. But before we begin, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and to my Twitter account, at Holland underscore Phantom, so you don't miss out on any new Pokemon TCG content. And now with that out of the way, let's get into the battle. And here we go, the battle has started, with both players flipping over their starting Pokémon. On the Meganium side, we've got Pichu as the active Pokémon, and on the Gengar side, we've got Cleffa as the active Pokémon, with a Ghastling on the bench. The Gengar side is going first, attaching a Psychic Energy to Cleffa, and a Gold Berry to the benched Ghastly. Okay, no more cards come down, there's the attack declared Eek. The player has to flip a coin, and it comes up heads. So the attack goes through, and they can shuffle away their hand to draw seven brand new cards. It's important to remember that in this format, if a Pokemon tries to attack a baby Pokemon, the player has to flip a coin. And if they get Tails, uh, the attack fails and the turn automatically ends. Which is why Cleffa has to flip a coin against Pichu, as they're both baby Pokemon. On the Meganium side, Chikorita comes on onto the bench. And now the player activates Pokemon Fan Club as their supporter to search the deck for two basic Pokemon to put onto the bench. So the first one is going to be Execute, and the second one is going to be Cleffa. Now both sides have a Cleffa. It's going to be one of the best uh, Pokemon of this format. With its Eek attack, continuously letting the player shuffle and draw seven new cards as a form of consistency. The next card is going to be uh, Professor Elm, a trainer, to shuffle uh, the hand away to draw seven cards. So Professor Elm and Cleffa essentially have the same effect. But Professor Elm also has a side effect of uh, after it's played, the player can no longer use any more trainer cards for the remainder of the turn. Okay, the player puts down a second Cleffa and a second Execute. Pichu retreats to promote the Cleffa with the energy, and we might be seeing the attack come through. Yeah, there's the attack. Eek, and there's a coin flip. It comes up, also heads. So once again, the player's gonna shuffle and draw seven. There's uh, new cards coming down. Okay, and turn passes over to the Gengar side. Let's see what the Gengar side can do this turn. There's a card drawn. A Psychic Energy is equipped to the Benched Ghastly, and Copycat is played. Now the player gets to shuffle away their hand and draw cards equal to the number of cards the opponent has in hand, and we know that they have seven as they ended their turn with uh, Cleffa's Eek last turn. There's the cards coming down. And are we going to be seeing any more Pokemon come down? Yeah, we see the Ghastly evolve into Dark Haunter. And Professor Elm is also played to, once again, shuffle and draw seven. There's the new cards coming down again. Any more Pokemon coming down to the bench? Yeah, here we see a Mischievous coming down. And there's the attack. Eek! The coin flip is... Oh, it's Tails this time, so nothing happens. Turn passes over to the Meganium side. Do they have any evolutions to bring down? A Grass Energy is equipped to one of the benched Execute, and Chikorita evolves into Bayleaf. No more Pokemon come down, and there's the attack. Eek. Also hits uh, Tail, so nothing happens. No trainers were played for the Meganium side this turn. A Hoot Hoot comes down into the Gengar side, and a uh, Energy is equipped to Haunter, which immediately evolves into Gengar, and there's another Copycat being played. So the Gengar just needs one more energy to start attacking. And it could happen as soon as next turn. There's the new cards coming down from the Copycat. Any more Pokemon coming down? Pokemon Trader is activated to swap one of the Dark Haunter from the player's hand for any Pokemon from the deck. And the one chosen is going to be a second Hoot Hoot. Hoot Hoot, once it evolves, is going to be the main support Pokemon of the deck with his Pokemon power, Glaring Gaze. And there's the attack, Eek. The coin flip is heads. And there's the shuffle and draw. So no damage is coming down from either side just yet. They're using their first couple of turns of the game to set up their boards before the big attackers come down. So the Meganium side is hoping to power up an Executor, while the Gengar side is going to be powering up Dark Gengar. Oh, speaking of Executor, there it is. The first Executor of the game comes down. It's going to be the main attacker, as I said earlier. And a Grass Energy is equipped to Executor. Still no trainers from the Meganium side, and there's the attack Eek, which does go through this turn. And the player gets to shuffle and draw seven. 
a lot of coin flips happening in this game. <laughs> yeah, that's how this format is played when you're going up against baby Pokemon. You gotta flip a coin every single time. Turn passes over to the da Dark Gengar side. A third energy is equipped to Dark Gengar, and there's another Pokemon trader. Swapping out a Pokemon from the hand for one from the deck. So I might be seeing a Noctowl coming down this turn. Yeah, there it is. Noctowl comes down. To activate its Pokemon power, Glaring Gaze. There's Glaring Gaze activating. Flipping a coin. It comes up tail, so nothing happens. Otherwise, if they got heads off of it, they'd be able to look at the opponent's hand and shuffle away one of the trainers from their hand. Okay, Cleffa retreats to promote Dark Gengar, and there's the first attack declared. It comes up. Oh, tail, so nothing happens. Never mind. No damage coming down just yet. Turn passes over to the Meganium side. A third Grass Energy is equipped to the Executor. An Energy Stadium is played. A Focus Band is equipped to the Bench Executor. Do they have Meganium yet, though? Copycat is played to shuffle and draw seven. The player really needs to get Meganium onto the field. It's going to be the main support Pokemon for the deck. Although it is possible for Executor to take a KO this turn. Okay, another Executor comes down onto the bench. Oh, but still no Meganium. There's the attack. Eek. And now since Cleffa is going up against a Gengar, it does not have to flip a coin. There's the seven new cards being drawn. And let's see what the Gengar side can do on their following turn. They can still take a KO on Cleffa if they roll a heads. Okay, turn pass over to the Gengar side. Knocked Owl activates Glaring Gaze. There's the coin flip, and it comes up heads that time. All right. Oh, it looks like the player does have a Meganium in hand, so we, we're going to be seeing it on the following turn. The player chooses one of the opponent's Professor Elms to shuffle back into the deck. So Knockdown is really good for stripping away resources from the opponent's hand. Well, unfortunately, it only works on trainers and not Pokemon, so they cannot take away the opponent's Meganium. A Psychic Energy is equipped to the Bench Mischievous, and Professor Elm is played. There's the seven new cards being drawn. Let's see if the player draws into another Noctowl this turn. Oh yeah, there it is! Another Noctowl to use a second Glaring Gaze Pokemon power. There's a coin flip and it comes up heads! Okay, so a second heads, letting the player get rid of another trainer from the opponent's hand, this time choosing a copycat. So not giving the opponent any chance to draw new cards. And there's the attack. Pull in, the coin flip comes up. Heads that time, so the attack does go through, taking a one-hit KO on Cleffa, and Dark Gengar takes its first prize. On the Meganium side, Pichu comes up as a new active Pokemon, and let's see what the Meganium side can do. And then we finally see Meganium coming down, activating its Pokemon power, uh, Overgrowth. Overgrowth makes it so that every Grass Energy provides two energy at once, so now Executor essentially has six energy attached. Energy Stadium is activated, uh, flipping a heads on the coin flip, so now the player gets to get back one of the discarded Grass Energies to put back into their hand, which is equipped to the fresh Executor. And now the Executor with the six energy comes into the active spot to use its attack. Uh, but before the attack is declared, Balloon Berry is equipped to Meganium to give it a free retreat cost um, for one turn. Copycat is played, shuffling away the player's hand. And let's see how many cards are going to be drawing this turn. They must have drawn into it at the beginning of this turn, because they did not have it last turn after they got shuffled away by Noctowl. Okay, there's a new card coming into the hand. And there's the attack! Called Shot! It targets down one of the opponent's bench Pokémon and hits it for 10 damage for every energy attached to it. And like I said earlier, Overgrowth, um, what's it called? Overgrowth doubles the Grass Energy on Executor to 6, hitting for 60 damage and taking a 1-hit KO against Noctowl. And now both sides are tied. Five prizes remaining. Dark Gengar comes up as a new active Pokemon. And Pokemon Trader is played to put a new Ghastly onto the bench. Are we going to see any energies? Yeah, a Psychic Energy is equipped to the new Ghastly. 
And Glaring Gaze is activated by Knockdown. The coin flip is heads to once again look at the opponent's hand and shuffle away one of their trainer cards. The one chosen is going to be another Professor Elm. Okay, there's a deck coming back down. Any trainers coming down from the Gengar side? Uh, no, but they are going to be using their attack pull in to bring up the opponent's Pichu, and then immediately hitting it for 30 damage to take a one-hit KO against Pichu. I'm sorry, little buddy. That's four prizes remaining for Dark Gengar. On the Meganium side, Kleppa comes up as the new active Pokémon. And a Grass Energy is equipped to the Meganium. Okay, we're going to be seeing Executor come back into the active spot. And it's called Shot is going to be able to take a one-hit KO against anything on the bench. And they're targeting down the second Noctowl. That's another prize taken by the Meganium side. On the Gengar side, Ghastly evolves into Dark Hunter, and no more cards to play. There's the attack right away, pull in to bring up the opposing Cleffa and immediately knocking it out with 30 damage. This Gengar has no mercy, knocking out baby Pokemon. Tough guy. <laughs> okay, the new Executor comes up into the active spot. And a fourth energy is equipped to the benched one, giving it eight energy. Oh, and there's the, the trainer. That's going to be the play. Double Gust. Now both players have to choose one of their opponent's bench Pokemon to bring into the active spot, so the new Pokemon are going to be Mischievous and Meganium. Meganium retreats for free with the Balloon Berry. And here we see Executor come back into the active spot. So it looks like that was a pretty clever move to take a 1-hit KO against Gengar, as Cold Shot can only target down bench Pokemon, not the opposing active Pokemon. So Call Shot takes a one-hit KO against Gengar, and now both sides are tied at three prizes remaining apiece. But we do see a new Gengar coming down to the bench. It just needs a third energy to start attacking this turn. Do they have it? Here are the cards being drawn by Professor Elm. Yes, they do have a third energy. And they activate their opponent's... Energy Stadium, but it comes up tail, so nothing happens. Mr. Vess is uh, retreating by discarding its energy, and Gengar comes up as a new active Pokémon. So is it going to be hitting the opposing Executor, or is it going to be bringing up something from the bench? Okay, yeah, they're targeting down the opposing Meganium to bring into the active spot, hitting it for 30 damage, and also putting it to sleep. And now the Meganium's asleep, Gengar's Deep Sleep Pokémon power activates, making it so that the player has to flip two heads instead of just one to wake up their Meganium. And there's the two coin flips, they come up. Ooh, double heads! Meganium does wake up! And the player can either uh, attack with it or retreat it if they attach a uh, second energy onto it. Okay, there's a second energy coming down, which now counts as uh, four grass energies with its uh, Pokemon power. And it opts to attack, hitting for 40 damage with Soothing Scent, and also putting Gengar to sleep. There's a damage coming down. Gengar only has to flip one coin, as its Pokemon power deactivates when it's affected by a special condition. But it came up tails, so Gengar is still asleep this turn, it cannot attack. Another Ghastly comes down to the bench, and a Goldberry is equipped to the Gengar. Goldberry is going to activate between turns to heal it for 40 damage. Energy Stadium is played. It comes up heads, and now they can get back one of the discarded Psychic Energies to put back into their hand. Energy is equipped to the Benched Ghastly, and there's Copycat being played. They shuffle away their hand to draw. Um, how many cards? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 cards! Oh, that's a good hand. Let's see if they can draw into another Noctowl, because I'm that Hoot Hoot has just been sitting there this entire game. Oh, nothing else is played. Between turns, Gengar wakes up, and Goldberry also activates, completely healing the Gengar. So Meganium cannot knock it out this turn. Turn passes over to the Meganium side. A Focus Band is equipped to the Meganium, and a Grass Energy is equipped to the Executor without the Focus Band on the bench. And there's the attack, Soothing Scent, once again hitting Gengar for 40 damage, and once again putting it to sleep. Between turns, there's a coin flip. 
heads that time. So Gengar does wake up. And it's going to be able to start attacking. Another Psychic Energy is equipped to the Benched Ghastly. And it evolves into Dark Haunter. Energy State of its plate, and it comes up another head, so now the player gets to get back another discard to Psychic Energy. Energy Stadium putting in a lot of work for the Gengar side. And now it's being replaced by Rocket's Hideout, giving all dark Pokemon 20 more HP. So now Gengar is up to a total of 90 HP. And there's the attack, pull in. Hitting Magini for 30 more damage, and once again putting it to sleep. There's the two coin flips. Okay, one of them is heads, but the other one is tails, so Meganium does not wake up this turn. Let's see what else the player can do. Another Chikorita comes down to the bench. And Copycat is played to shuffle away their player's hand to draw uh, one card for every one of the cards in the opponent's hand. So it looks like the player might be anticipating that their Meganium is going to be knocked out, so they want to set up another one on the bench. Another energy stadium comes down to replace the opponent's Rocket's Hideout. And that's going to be it. Turn passes, and let's see if Meganium wakes up. No, it double tails that time. Meganium does not wake up this turn. A third energy is equipped to the Haunter, and it evolves into Dark Gengar. That's another Dark Gengar being played to the bench. And there's the attack. Pull in. Hitting for another 30 damage. So Meganium is down to just 10 HP. It's still asleep. Let's see if it wakes up this turn. Another Double Tails. Ooh, things are not looking good for the Meganium side. Pokemon Trader is played. They're going to be swapping out one of the Execute from the hand for any Pokemon from the deck. And they're probably going to be putting in a Bayleaf to evolve the Chikorita. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Bayleaf comes down. So hopefully they have the second Meganium ready, ready to go in, in hand for the next turn. Next, the uh, player's going to use Professor Elm to shuffle away their hand to draw seven new cards. So they must have not had the Megane in the hand. And they're hoping to draw into it with uh, with this trainer. Let's see if they get it for next turn. Turn passes. And there's the two coin flips. Okay, they both come up heads. Meganium does wake up, but it's too little too late. Gengar might be taking the KO. We'll see if Focus Band can save Meganium. A Darkness Energy is equipped to the Benched Gengar, giving him 10 more attack points. And there's the attack, pull in. So first, Meganium goes to sleep. Let's see if Focus Man can spare it for one more turn. The player has to get a coin flip of heads, otherwise Meganium is KO'd. There's a coin flip and it's... It is heads! Alright, so Meganium is spared for one more turn. In between turns... Oh, another tail, so Meganium does not wake up. Let's see what the player can do. Oh, Double Gust! Okay, that's another way to wake up the Meganium. The player drags up the opponent, uh, Mischievous. And the Gengar player brings up Bayleaf. And now with Meganium back on the bench, it wakes up. And its Pokemon power activates again. The Grass Energy is equipped to Bayleaf, which doubles to two Grass Energies, giving the, the player enough energy to, re to retreat the Bayleaf, bringing up Executor. And now Energy Stadium is played. The player flips a coin and it comes up, heads, to bring back the discarded grass energy that they used to retreat the bay leaf. And now Executor can take a one-hit KO against either one of the Gengar on the opponent's bench. And there's the attack, called shot, hitting the new Gengar, the one with the darkness energy, and that's another prize taken by the Meganium side. On the Gengar side, the player uses the energy statum, but this time it comes up tail, so nothing happens. Do they have a way to retreat this mischievous? Yes, they do. There's the energy attach and discard. Gengar comes up into the active spot. And another Ghastly comes down, followed by the supporter town volunteers to get back five cards from the discard pile to shuffle back into the deck. And the ones chosen are going to be three psychic energies, a Haunter, and a Gengar. All going back in. So it looks like the player might be setting up another um, Gengar to put down. And there's the attack, pull in to bring up the damaged Meganium from the opposing side. And that is going to be enough damage for the KO. Yeah, there's the attack. And there's a knockout. 
Another prize was taken by Gengar, and now both sides are down to just two prizes remaining. Executor comes up in, as a new active Pokemon, and does the player have another Meganium? Yes, they do! A fresh Meganium comes down. The player attaches a Grass Energy to it. And now his Overgrowth Pokemon Power activates, giving Executor 8 Energy. Energy Stadium is activated. Comes up um, heads on the coin flip to get back a discarded Grass Energy. And there it is. There's Cold Shot, hitting Ghastly for a one-hit KO, and now the Meganium side is down to just one prize remaining. Things are not looking good for the Gengar side. As they cannot take a one-hit KO against anything, but Executor can take a one-hit KO against everything. Okay, the Energy Stadium activates, getting back a Psychic Energy, which comes down to the Mischievous. Rocket's Hideout replaces the opposing... Energy Stadium to give Gengar 20 more HP. And there's the attack. Pull in to bring up the opposing Meganium, hitting it for 30 damage and also putting it to sleep. So it looks like the Gengar side is hoping to stall out the game. There's a damage coming down. Let's see if Meganium can wake up this turn, although it only has a 25% chance of waking up. There's the coin flips and... Ooh, double heads! It does wake up! All the player has to do is just attach an energy to retreat the Meganium to promote the Executor, and they can win the game! Do they have it? Oh, no energy, but it doesn't matter because it did have the Balloon Berry giving Meganium a free retreat cost, bringing up the Executor to use its called shot against anything on the opposing Pokémon's bench. And there's the attack. Called shot to take a winning KO against Cluffa to take the final prize, and there's the handshake. Meganium is your winner. So what did you guys think of that battle? Let me know down in the comments below, and be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video to help this channel grow and reach new viewers. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, this is the Holland Phantom, logging out.